check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Oh, it's Fish Friday. Happy Fish Friday. Yeah. Not that we don't fish on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I thought this would be a good video for uh, people who have never fly fished or Euro nymphed. And I thought what we'd do is uh, make a, a video from beginning to end showing you everything from setting up your rod to tying on your fly to landing a monster fish. Can you, can you do that? <laughs> All right. So we're down here at the river, and uh, Greg's gonna get set up to fish. Jen's gonna go for a little swim. So we're gonna watch Greg uh, set up his rod from beginning to end. Greg's got his rod assembled, and now he's uh, getting ready to pull out his line. So first, what he's what he's doing is he's taking the rubber band, and he's just putting it on the on his left wrist there to hold it for when he's done. And then he's just pulling some line out. And you want to pull out all the leader and some of the fly line, maybe a couple pulls of fly line as well. So the the leader is the the bright colored stuff, uh, the bright colored monofilament, and the fly line is the the braided, the coated. Uh, braided line so he's just stretching it out a little bit and uh, takes all the coils out coils will eventually come out when you fish but it'll take a few casts so it's just it's just easier to feed through his guides once he stretches it out now it's a good idea to stretch some of the fly line because that's that's where it's gonna break. It's gonna be in the first five or seven feet of line because that's that's where I tend to break the line. That's I think it's because I step on it, kind of like what you're doing. You know, you just that's where my lines have always failed. So I always try to stretch it out and test the line first before I feed it through. All right, so now Greg's got all his uh, line fed through his guides. And now what he's gonna do is uh, attach some tippet and some, and a fly or two, and then, uh, and then he'll be ready to fish. So Greg's running about three and a half feet of 4X from his uh, tippet ring, from his leader tippet ring. Now he's adding another section of 5X which is a one size thinner line. It sound right, boys. So this water's fairly big today. What are you what are you gonna use? You know, I'm actually gonna start light, because I wanna start on the soft edge water here where we see these bubbles coming through. And I might work into the fast water later, at which point I'll put on a heavier point fly, uh -huh. but for now, because I'm going to start on that kind of edge and soft water, I'm only going to use a fly with a three and a half millimeter bead on it. Only? Oh, that thing's huge. I guess so. Well, that's a... uh, so this is pheasant tail, and yeah, it's maybe a size 12 hook, and uh, it's kind of a classic fly in a more intriguing color. Um, well, I'll tell you, the more I fish, the less particular I am about the patterns, even though I love tying flies, I'm really particular about how it presents, and if I think that the fly is going to get to where the fish are. So I'm actually going to fish, so this has got a moderate amount of weight, maybe yeah, three and a half millimeter bead, and my dull nippers that I'm going to replace because they're really, you know, my three dollar nippers are just done. <laughs> Keep those though, because I guarantee when you buy new nippers, you're gonna lose them, and you're gonna wish you even had those crappy ones. Well, I generally subscribe to cheap sunglasses and cheap nippers <laughs> and things like that because I just can't keep track. 
So now I'm going to tie on my upper fly, and this fly is going to be a lot more lightly weighted. In fact, it's going to be zero weighted. And this is just a little wet fly, just a soft tackle. It's kind of going to imitate sort of a cream colored caddis, but it could be an awful lot of things. This has got no weight, it's going to have great movement. Um, and I'm just fishing off this super short tag that's tied to a tippet ring in the middle of my tippet section. Uh, I like to lubricate the knots, just a little bit of saliva, because uh, they cinch a whole lot cleaner and you don't create a lot of friction and heat that could potentially damage the fluorocarbon and weaken the knot. So I'm just lubricating the knot so it cinches cleanly without doing any sort of thermal damage to the material. So that's my setup. That's about, what, maybe about 30 inches between the two. Maybe a little bit long, but I'm not too picky tonight. I think it's going to be fine. Lobbing upstream, and I'm stripping the line back to get the slack out of it. Now I'm fishing. As I fish here, I'm trying to get that fly down. I'm trying to let that fly sink. And if I keep tugging on it, it's just not gonna sink the way I want it to. Exactly, so I, I, I let it have a little slack so the fly can find its way to the bottom. I'm trying to get it to bounce around down there. I'm just trying to get it, let it be passively taken in the current. And I'm staying close to it, but trying not to agitate it, just just kind of marking the progress. One thing I'm noticing here that I don't actually like that much is that the current is taking the fly right kind of down toward me, not out toward the, away from me. It's not really turning out to be, I'm almost standing too much in the zone here. So I'm probably gonna try a different lane. I might cast a little higher into this. I feel like I'm happy with my drifts, but not. I I am, yeah. So we can kind of, I could kind of work my way up into this pocket here steadily. I kind of like this spot right here. And I can feel as the fly's moving along, there's enough weight with that point fly. I can actually feel it making contact with the bottom and kind of tugging and dragging a little bit on the bottom. And if I didn't feel that, I might consider putting on a heavier fly to make that kind of contact because it's a warm, bright day and it's the Truckee River. And boy, those fish, they sure like it on the bottom and they don't always want to come up. So getting that fly down into their feeding zone is really important, I find. You know it would make a good video? One day we'll put a GoPro on Jin. Let him yeah. track that fly. Yeah. He, he does yeah, a good job of it. He's, in the pro, he's on the program, for sure. There you go. Nope. Nope. That's wood. I'll just pretend it's a fish. Yeah. <laughs> Jin, Jin's fooled. Yeah, Jin's, Jin's fooled. fooled. <laughs> Jin doesn't know the difference. Jin, that's a big fish. Yeah, he, I think he's even getting wise to it. I think he's even starting to figure he's it out. He's getting wise to snags. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think he's starting to be able to distinguish. Go see, Jin. What do we think, bud? And I'm mindful of the stuff behind me. I know there's a big willow behind me, so I'm casting in a way that, I'm trying not to catch that big willow. And I'm 
I'm also focused on getting really as long a drift as I can here. As long a drag free drift as I can. Load downstream, a cast upstream, and I retrieve, I gently retrieve the rig toward me, keeping the rod tip ahead of the drift as it goes by me. And then I'll just keep it going downstream. I'll keep it going. In this case, I'm gonna let it swing. I'm gonna let my rod tip come down, and I'm gonna let my rig swing. Sometimes a fish likes it when the rig starts coming up. A couple false casts here, just to clear everything out. Long upstream cast, stripping back toward me. Pretty steadily, not a lot of slack, just a little bit of slack. I, my rig just paused on the bottom. It's pretty heavy for how slow this water is, but I'm not hanging up, so that's okay. And I feel like I'm getting a natural, a natural looking drift. Forward cast upstream. So right now the flies are sinking. Maybe by now they've hit the bottom. They're swinging down. There's a fish. Really subtle take, really subtle take. It sound right, boys. There we go. Right, boy. 